Hey, what is going on? So in today's video, look what I've got right here. We are going to be testing the new 2020 MacBook Pro. This is the one with the M1 chip. It has 16 gigabytes of unified memory, 512 gigabytes of storage. And we're gonna be putting this thing to the test against my 2016 MacBook Pro. I more or less got the most spec'd out version of the late 2016. It has the i7 processor, it has 16 gigs of RAM, it has 512 gigs of storage, and I opted for the AMD graphics processor. So it does have a discrete graphics processor. Now, one of the reasons that I chose to upgrade was due to the fact that my current laptop, specifically in Adobe Premiere, is really struggling to render uh, 4K, especially playing it in real time. And I th think that this laptop, even though at the current time, Premiere is emulated, I think that this laptop may have the capability of outperforming the current laptop that I have. And I actually think that down the road, we will actually see even greater performance gains. All right, guys, so here are the two laptops that we're gonna be putting head to head. As you can see, I have these set up exactly the same. Uh, one thing that I did wanna point out that I have been using is a Thunderbolt 3 cable, and uh, you can actually use this Thunderbolt 3 cable to connect your MacBooks together. And it's kinda of interesting because this allows you to transfer files at ridiculously fast speeds. It's like basically having your own local area network between the two devices, and I've been using that uh, to get some of these larger files uh, between the two laptops. Okay, just to get things started off, we'll go ahead and open up Google Chrome. Now I will say that Google Chrome has been optimized. When I downloaded it, you had the option to select the M1. So on three, one, two, three. So you see it actually does open a little bit faster on my Intel Mac from 2016. Let's go ahead and try Safari. And Safari definitely won over here on the new uh, MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. So that's kind of interesting. So now we're going to focus on Adobe Premiere. Let's see how fast it opens up. So this is interesting. So Adobe Premiere has not yet been optimized. So it is running emulated or more or less being translated through the, the Rosetta 2 software. So it's interesting to me that that actually opened, it seemed to open faster over here. I think this might just be due to the disk speed. Uh, the solid state drives are much faster on this newer MacBook Pro. Okay, so here we have some footage that I shot of my fish tank on my R5. Uh, this is 4K, all I, 24 frames per second. Let's see how Premiere does with the playback. You can see already it looks pretty smooth. I'm going to go ahead and full screen it. I'm not noticing any frames dropping. CPU looks to be in use about somewhere around 12%. And the GPU, if I had to guess, 30% of the GPU. Some of these stats here in iStat haven't been updated for the M1 processor. Okay, so this is the same test on my 2016 MacBook Pro. Doesn't look like it's dropping any frames. So far, the footage looks pretty smooth. Uh, this machine only has four cores. Of course, they are hyper-threading. Looks like it's using about 33% of the overall CPU. And then uh, the GPU, if I had to guess, I'd say that's about 65% of the AMD Radeon Pro 460. But yeah, it looks pretty good otherwise, but definitely working this machine just a little bit harder. All right, so I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, nobody cares about 8K, Eric. And for the most part, I do agree with that. 8K is out. It's crazy. However, I do have a camera, the Canon R5, which is capable of shooting in 8K. And when I shoot in 8K, I actually get some extra features, like I get the ability to use C-Log2 and C-Log3. Those two file formats give me greater dynamic range. And it's basically because the 8K RAW has 12 bits of color sampling where every other mode in my camera is either 8-bit or 10-bit. So I get just a little bit more dynamic range. If I'm in a very tricky lighting situation, uh, I could use the uh, 8K RAW uh, and bring it back in, oversample it down to 4K, 
uh, and get, get some more colors, get some more dynamic range. So that's one of the reasons I really want to test it. This machine right here, my 2016 MacBook Pro, does not have the ability to really do anything with 8K. It really struggles. Let's test it out. Let's see what it can do just for the sake of, of testing it. Okay, so we're going to start off on my 2016 MacBook Pro. This is 8K UHD in the all i format. Let's go ahead and play it back. Okay, so you can see it's really struggling with this. We're definitely dropping frames. Uh, if we look up here at the CPU, basically the CPU is about 70%. GPU is using 30%. Definitely not capable of playing it. Uh, this isn't actually raw. This is just the all I version of it. Okay, so let's play back that same footage on the new MacBook Pro. You can already see it's much more smooth. It doesn't appear to be dropping any frames. CPU is about 17%. Uh, actually saying 11 now. And then the GPU is about, I'd say around 50%. But yeah, just this is incredible, guys. I mean, this thing, uh, I guess it's because of the system on a chip. It's just able to handle this so much better. And what's really crazy is that this is actually an Intel Mac application, <laughs> so it's not even optimized yet. So we really should see some good stuff whenever they finally optimize Adobe Premiere. OK, so let's go ahead and switch over to 8K RAW. So this is going to be the most rigorous test that I'm going to run here in Adobe Premiere. I'm going to go ahead and use the reveal in project. And then I'm going to show you this file. And I want to show you the selections that I made. So this is what I spoke of earlier. Um, if you notice, if I double click on this and then I go to effect controls, you'll notice right here that because this is a raw that I have the ability to do C log two or C log three. Uh, which I can't do that otherwise uh, using the all I format in my camera. In addition, in addition to that, selecting C log two, which is actually the default, I have over here selected an input LUT. Uh, it's basically the Canon log two. Uh, it's the BT 709. Uh, so this is going to translate that raw footage. Uh, and then I'm going to be using the 17 grid. It's actually the least taxing. Uh, 33 grid is more taxing and then the 65 grid is even more taxing. So we're going to start out easy. Uh, we're just going to use the easiest one, 17 grid, uh, and we're going to see if this thing can play back raw footage with a Canon LUT applied to it. OK, here it goes. OK, so you can see it's stuttering just a little bit there. You can definitely see that it is losing frames. CPU is basically topping out, little rainbow wheel going on. And the GPU, surprisingly, was only looking to be about. It's like the machine is like not even responsive here. Yeah, so that kind of shows you there that this is sort of pushing the limits. Now, again, this is software that hasn't been optimized yet. So we can only hope that maybe with an optimized version of Adobe Premiere Pro that we might actually get some better performance here. Let's try that same test just for fun over on my 2016 MacBook Pro. OK, so here is that same test on my 2016 MacBook Pro. Right here, you can see that we are selecting the Canalog 2 as before, as well as we are using the Canon supplied LUT. So. Give her a go. You see right now that it is definitely dropping frames. I'm really not even seeing any frames. There was one. Another one. CPU pretty much maxed out. Interestingly, the GPU is not really getting taxed that much. And I've noticed that with this computer before. It seems like because the GPU doesn't have enough memory, that it 
basically hands everything off to the CPU. The CPU ends up doing all the work, which ends up making it actually worse. And I think that's one of the reasons that it performs so much better over on the M M1 processor because it has that 16 gigabytes of additional memory. So if you've thought about the 8 gig versus the 16 gig, maybe consider the fact that, you know, if you're doing any any 8K, you're probably going to have better success with the 16 gigs versus the 8 gig, especially in the future as software becomes heavier. You know, I just venture to say that that you're going to get better mileage with the 16 gig of unified memory. I'm sure people are going to disagree with me down in the comments. That's fine. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. So uh, just to let you know, I am planning on doing a comparison of DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro on these two systems just to see how they perform relative to each other. If there's anything else you would like me to test, let me know down in the comments. I'll be sure to subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, uh, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.